Hey, this is Sean with The Prepared Homestead. And today I wanna to talk to you about our uh, favorite six nitrogen fixing plants. Okay, these are plants that um, we utilize to help enhance our systems, to help make them basically uh, a little more self-sufficient, right? So we don't need to add nitrogen because these plants help the totality of the system. They help to basically pull nitrogen from the air. Okay, this is what nitrogen fixation means. They, they're able to pull nitrogen from the air, from the atmosphere, which is 78% nitrogen, and utilize it. And most plants can't do that, but there are cer certain plants that can. Now, it's not quite that simple. Those plants need a need some help, right? Okay, they need some microbiological -biolog help in the form of bacteria, okay? So they need certain bacteria to be able to fix that nitrogen. So there's an exchange that happens between the bacteria and the plant for, um, you know, it's, it's a basically a carb, carbohydrate nitrogen exchange that occurs. And the, um, the byproduct of that is that those plants are able to uptake that nitrogen based on that exchange and do really well. In turn, those plants can benefit the other plants around them through a couple of processes. Okay, it's not as simple as, um, okay, so you, you plant a nitrogen fixing plant, then boom, all of a sudden there's nitrogen everywhere around it. It doesn't work like that. But when those, when you have root dieback, okay, when you have leaf drop, when you have decomposition of those types of plants, that, that material contains quite a bit of nitrogen. And therefore all the other plants around it uh, benefit from it. Okay, so without going too too deep into into that, but that's that is how how it works generally. Let's talk about the six plants. Now, the first plant, it, real quick, is right behind me, and it is a black locust. Okay, black locust. You can also honey locust. Uh, there's other. There's there's quite a few trees and shrubs that fix nitrogen. Black locust is a great one. There's many other reasons. In fact, I did a whole video on black locust, but that's our number one plant for nitrogen fixation okay so there again there's the black locust and interestingly number two is a native plant and it's lupin okay lupin and lupin generates this absolutely beautiful you know purple purple and pink flowers and then they end up turning into these seed pods there okay it's a nitrogen fixer so lupin and it's it's a native but so what what it, i'm saying is like we don't necessarily plant that but we utilize it when it's there and we, we certainly encourage its growth there. I'll put it that way. Okay, so again, number one, locust. Number two is lupin. All right, so number three. Number three is autumn olive. Okay, autumn olive. And then I'm going to show you, I think I've got uh, a good example. Number four is very simple. It is clover. Diff all different kinds of clovers. Okay, there's, there's a, a white Dutch clover there. Um, it, it is obviously native here in, in North Idaho. It, we have a lot of native uh, clover, both red and white, uh, but we do throw a lot of clover seed all over the place. Okay, so so we definitely uh, do plant it. In fact, there's let's see, nope, that's not. It. But there's there's just tons of clover, right? So there's some clover right down there next to our some grapes, etc. So okay, so that is number four. Okay, number five is Siberian pea shrub. <clears throat> okay, so here's here's some pea shrub right there. In fact, you can see the pods that are developing in this one. Let me show you one more. I've got a, another one over here. Yeah, this guy right here, this one. This is a beautiful Siberian pea shrub and we encourage its growth and we have several growing on the property. They do really well here. They require almost nothing. And then of course they are a nitrogen fixer. Okay, I just wanted to show you this real quick. There's a lupin that hasn't gone to the pods yet. Hey, now, right here we have uh, some red clover. Okay, so you have all different kinds of clovers. And then the number six for today is gumi, gumi berry. And in fact, you can see there's just tons of berries on it. In fact, I better pick those and uh, we'll probably do some fresh eating with them, of course, and then drying them. But this is also another excellent nitrogen fixing shrub. And that kind of rounds it out. And that's it. Those those um, are, are obviously nitrogen fixing plants that do well in our uh, climate, but they do have a very wide range. And so they, they work in, in many different uh, contexts. 
but they're great to incorporate into your systems. They, they help, um, they help enhance the whole system. Okay. So I, that's kind of the best way that I can put it. Uh, definitely something you should incorporate in and also kind of research and find out what plants that are naturally growing in your area uh, that fix nitrogen. Okay. So for, for example, up here, it's lupin, there's vet, different kinds of vetches, clovers, and things like that. Okay. So there, there's also probably, they're almost guaranteed to be nitrogen fixers around you anyway. However, it would be, it's good to know them. And then it's also good to plant nitrogen fixers very strategically. And there you go. So those are the six nitrogen fixers. Uh, make sure you uh, give us a thumbs up and give us a comment. What is your favorite nitrogen fixing plant? All right, we'll talk to you later.